Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gym and TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. What a lovely day to be back everyone and here is the Zing News for today. Vietnam capital extends COVID-19 restrictions for another two weeks. Vietnam's capital extends COVID-19 restrictions for a further two weeks as authorities launch a plan to test up to 1.5 million people for the coronavirus in higher risk areas of the capital to contain a climb in infections. The Southeast Asian country dealt successfully with the virus for much of the pandemic, but the virulent Delta variant has proved more challenging in recent months. Hanoi ordered people to stay at home and has halted all non-essential activities since July. Thailand has now divided the city into red, orange and green zones based on the infection risk. This week, checkpoints separated various zones and central communities are barricaded off with fencing to control who is getting in and out. Hanoi authorities expect up to 1.5 million test samples to be collected in the next week. The government is eager to keep the outbreak from reaching the intensity seen in Ho Chi Minh City. In the Southern Business Hub, people have been encouraged to test themselves using antigen COVID-19 kits after health services were overwhelmed. Official data shows Hanoi has been reported on average 50 cases daily and has recorded over 4,000 cases since the pandemic began. Although the numbers are still low, authorities are wary after the Delta variant has helped drive up infections across the country to over 524,000 cases. Vietnam has one of the lowest coronavirus vaccination rates in the region, with only 3.3% of its 98 million people fully vaccinated and 15.4% with one shot. Thousands of demonstrators protest in Bangkok calling for the resignation of Thailand's Prime Minister. Thousands of people are protesting in downtown Bangkok, demanding the resignation of Thai Prime Minister Prayu chan ocha and they will protest every day until he leaves the office. The peaceful demonstration at the Asoka intersection was one of the biggest such gatherings this year, despite a warning from the police earlier in the day that protests are banned due to the coronavirus restrictions. A smaller protest also take place near the Prime Minister's residence in another part of the city. The demonstration is also taking place while Prayut is facing a grilling in Parliament in a sincere debate that started earlier this week. The political opposition accused the Prime Minister and five other cabinet ministers of corruption, economic mismanagement and bungling the coronavirus response, which Prayut and his ministers have rejected. Protests against Prayut have gained momentum since last June, as groups who sought his removal last year returned with broader support from people angered by a worsening coronavirus situation. A group of people in Thailand recycle plastic bottles into personal protective equipment. The Thailand group recycled plastic bottles that were thrown away by the bank residents to become life protectors in the form of personal protective equipment coveralls. Thailand is facing a scarcity of personal protective equipment or PPE, but has an abundance of plastic waste and various public sectors are now working together to turn millions of plastic bottles into reusable PPE suits in a bid to address both issues. Bangkok residents says the collected bottles are shredded and turned into threads to be waved into fabrics, which are eventually used for PPE either for hospitals or Buddhist temples, where monks have been cremating coronavirus victims. People mainly focus on giving personal protective equipment to doctors and health workers, but we forget that those at the temples are also at the front line too, servicing the dead. Because they don't get enough attention, it makes me feel good about being part of this.
The head of sale and marketing of Thailand Tafeta Textile Company, Arno Pop Chompumin, says the fabric that they make is to prevent the virus. After the plastic bottles are turned into threads, it will then go through a fabric weaving process, then dye it and coat it so it becomes water resistant. This is so that it can prevent particle dust from passing through and prevent the virus from coming into contact with us. The company starts weaving fabric made from plastic bottles from June last year. The fabric is the same. It's a 3 meter spread, but it's not the same method of sewing. Factories usually have protocols in sewing medical wear so that there is no harm that will allow leakage to come through. Here, the local volunteers are sewing the personal protective equipment, so it's not the medical standard. However, the suits will cover the overall body and can help provide certain protection to the wearer. Pra Maha Pranom Damalankaro tells Reuters that there are times when it's very difficult to get hold of PPS suits. Sometimes even if you have money, you can't buy. But now we're making it out of upcycling plastic bottles, so water trash is now valuable. Government officials supervising the process says, although the coveralls are not a medical grade, it is still a layer of protection for those dealing with the bodies of people who died from the coronavirus. In addition, the Chakdain Temple Abbot says the upcycling project was helping to ensure more people exposed to the coronavirus were protected, not only medical professionals. According to the Bangkok's health department figures that the upcycled PPE suits are also reusable for up to 20 times after being washed, helping to cut down on the medical waste generated during the pandemic. The amount of medical waste have increased by 94% in the July to August period compared to the same period during the pre-pandemic times. Really marks a thousand days after China detained two Canadians in the middle of Huawei dispute. Supporters of two Canadians accused of spying and held in a Chinese prison for 1,000 days rallied demanding the release in a case that has soared diplomatic ties between Ottawa and Beijing. Businessman Michael Spavor and former diplomat Michael Kovrig were detained in December 2018, shortly after Canada arrested Meng Wanzhou, the chief financial officer of Huawei Technologies, on a warrant from the United States. Last month, a Chinese court sentenced Spavor to 11 years in prison for espionage. Meng is waiting verdict on her U.S. extradition request after the hearing wrapped up in a British Columbia court last month. Several hundred people gathered at the park in Ottawa, with some wearing the shirts printed, March from the Michaels, 7,000 steps for freedom, carrying banner, bring them home. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has called a snap election for September 20, is trailing his main opponent, Conservative Party leader Erin Tolle, who has demanded a tougher approach against China. Trudeau, when asked about criticism that his government has not done enough to free the two Michaels, says, when dealing with citizens in trouble to board, we use all the tools at our disposal, usually not shouting in the public square. Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister, Mark Garneau, who joined the rally in a statement, says that years have been cruelly stolen from both men and their families. Manila residents welcome in the government announcement of the easing of COVID-19 restrictions in the country. Manila residents says they welcome the announcement of a relaxation of COVID-19 restrictions by the Philippine government. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque at the briefing says some COVID-19 restrictions in the Manila region will be relaxed and plans to shift to a smaller localized lockdowns to support the economy will also be outlined. Dining services, as well as religious gatherings of up to 10% of capacity, are some activities allowed as part of the relaxed restrictions. As you can see, we have small eatery. GCQ is better for us since more people are allowed outside and we can have a source of income. 
When we are in total lockdown, only a handful of people are outside and small businesses like what we have cannot open at all. Um, gaya ng mga gantong mga small business lang, is hindi po nabubuksan halos. The moves come despite the Southeast Asian country reported record infection numbers as it battles the Delta variant. Daily cases in the past 30 days alone accounted for 21% of the country's total infections of over 2.8 million. The second highest level in Southeast Asia while deaths have exceeded 34,000. Tropical storm concern lands in the Philippines leaving more damage. Tropical storm concern make landfall and cause damages more houses in the central Philippines. Concern with the winds packing 115 km per hour, making its first landfall in the eastern province of Samar and is forecasted to slowly weaken as it moves to northwest while traversing the Philippines Islands. <laughs> Footage taken by the Rupert Bulalake Capellan in the town of Dimasalang shows damaged house near the coastline shortly after the storm make another landfall in the province of Masbate. In the bulletin, the country's National Weather Agency warns of heavy to intense rain along with the possibility of floods and landslides in parts of the central Philippines in the next 24 hours. Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 ahead of trial assumption to hear the testimony of the victim's relatives. The trial of suspects in the 2014 dawning of a Malaysia Airlines flight over eastern Ukraine is set to resume with judges preparing to hear the testimony of victims' relatives. A previous hearing in June was dedicated to the readout of evidence against four fugitive suspects, three Russians and an Ukrainian citizen, accused of shooting down the plane on July 17, 2014 and killing all 298 people on board. Flight MH17 from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur crashed in a field in territory held by pro-Russian separatist fighting against Ukrainian forces after being shot down with what international investigators says was a Russian surface-to-air missile. After years of collecting evidence, a team of international investigators concluded in May 2018 that the missile launcher used to shoot down the aircraft belonged to Russia's 53rd anti-aircraft missile brigade. The Dutch government holds Moscow responsible. Russia denies any involvement. The first suspects are standing trial in absentia. The Japanese government will continue to communicate with the Taliban and monitor the Afghan situation. Japan's top government spokesperson says the country will continue to communicate with the Taliban and monitor the situation of Afghanistan after the group announced its new interim government. The names announced for the new government three weeks after the Taliban swept to military victory as United States-led foreign forces withdrew include an associate of the Islamist militant group's founder as premier and a wanted man on the United States terrorism list as interior minister. The Taliban announced its establishment of an interim government and cabinet members. While closely monitoring the actions of the Taliban, Japan will continue to cooperate with the United States and other related countries through various efforts including practical dialogue with the Taliban. We are doing the utmost to ensure the safety of Japanese nationals and for local staff who remain in the area and to also provide necessary support to leave the country. Kato also says the Japanese government will continue to support Japanese nationals who remain in Afghanistan, adding that Tsukasa Uemura, a seasoned diplomat, was in Qatar to hold dialogues with personnel from the Taliban office and G7 counterparts. China's National Health Commission says all vaccines developed by China technically available and are in clinical trials. An official with the National Health Commission says all China-developed COVID-19 vaccines via five technical roads have gone through or are undergoing clinical trials. 
Meanwhile, Zheng Zhongwei, Director of the Development Center for Medical Science and Technology of the NHA at a press briefing held in Beijing, introduces the progress of Chinese vaccines development. Since the beginning of the outbreaks, we've chosen five technical roads for developing COVID-19 vaccines, which are inactivated vaccines, adenovirus vector vaccines, recombinant protein vaccines, vaccines using attenuated influenza viruses vectors, and nucleic exit vaccines. Our purpose is to guarantee the success rate. Here I want to tell you that, so far, all the vaccines developed via the five technology routes have gone through or are undergoing clinical trials. According to Zheng, among the inactivated vaccines, three types have received conditional market approval from the National Medical Products Administration, two types have been authorized for emergency use. Regarding the recombinant protein vaccines, one type has been approved for emergency use by the National Medical Products Administration, three types are undergoing phase 3 clinical trials, and five others are in phase 1 and phase 2 trials. One type of adenovirus vector vaccines has been approved by the National Medical Products Administration for conditional marketing, while three others are undergoing phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trials. The vaccines using attenuated influenza virus as vectors are currently undergoing phase 2 clinical trials, and the preparation for overseas phase 3 trials has begun. In terms of nucleic exit vaccines, we have an mRNA type and a DNA type. Both having been approved for overseas phase 3 clinical trials, the overseas trials are expected to be launched soon. South Korea extends distance curves for two weeks before Thanksgiving break end of month. South Korea extends social distancing curbs for several weeks to rein in COVID-19 outbreaks nationwide as the country supercharges its vaccination campaign ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday later this month. Health Minister Kwon deok Chel says the toughest level 4 restrictions in Greater Seoul and level 3 curbs in the rest of the country will run through October 3. He adds that the restaurants and cafes in the Greater Seoul area are ruled to be allowed to close an hour later each evening and families will to be allowed together in groups of up to eight people in the week of September 21 Joseok holiday. Restaurant owners in Seoul, however, expresses concerns over the prolonged social distancing rules and the curbs are not effective in preventing the outbreak but causing difficulties in their business. The Korea Disease Control Prevention Agency reports 1,709 new COVID-19 cases and 1,675 of which are locally acquired. Korea has recorded a total of 257,110 infections since the pandemic started, with 2,308 deaths. Thank you for watching everyone. Keep maintaining the health protocols. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a lovely weekend.